um, I uh, sought to introduce the university as an institution in that uh, uh, conceptual uh, frame. Uh, the most uh, challenging is, in fact, to overpass the, the, uh, the um, increasingly uh, blurring uh, uh, limits between those uh, concepts cultural diplomacy, public diplomacy, citizen diplomacy. Uh, which is which, uh, who does what, uh, who is responsible for actions in each of those uh, uh, domains. And in fact, some may ask, are, are those really different domains, different, different specialties of diplomacy? And consequently, is there a role for the university as an institution, as we know it, inside that uh, frame. The approaches to diplomacy tend to be restrictive, uh, restrictive because of an exclusively interstate insight. Uh, if we are going to ask uh, a career diplomat uh, how he thinks about citizen diplomacy, we are going to uh, uh, find out a uh, uh, huge uh, range of uh, answers from uh, uh, some that might be very conservative, there is no such thing as, such thing as uh, citizen diplomacy, that citizen diplomacy, it is only, uh, I don't know, an optimistic uh, uh, myth about uh, people who change the world just by a shake of hand, um, uh, to uh, uh, some uh, more uh, modern and uh, accepting uh, uh, definitions that we'll see in uh, citizen diplomacy an effect of the, of the uh, increasing uh, democratization of the world. Um, anyway, uh, it is a fact that uh, the state monopoly, historically speaking, uh, over diplomacy has always been challenged by private actors. Today, it is uh, defied both from the inside because of the growing public fragmentation. Uh, as you may observe in uh, any of the uh, European countries and in the uh, uh, countries of the Eastern Partnership, uh, each ministry tends to uh, create its own um, uh, diplomatic uh, relations. Negotiations are uh, tending to become more and more specialized, so each ministry will try to create its own uh, relationship or network, its own method, its own uh, uh, decisions. Um, some national authorities also tend to develop their diplomatic relations. Regionalization, uh, reorganization of the administration and uh, in the territory of uh, many of the European uh, states will already created or will create in the future, in the near future, more and more diplomatic action which is not centralized by the ministries of foreign affairs. In the same time, we have another phenomenon that comes from outside the diplomatic system. Um, diplomacy has to deal with a larger number and a more diverse typology of non-state actors in the domestic on the domestic side, but which is more important outside of it. Negotiation with a non-state actor is something that uh, in our days it uh, uh, may, uh, uh, may be uh, uh, approached by a career diplomat uh, in a regular basis. In that uh, uh, situation, this proliferation of actors we might agree that change, that transformed the diplomatic methods, the diplomatic techniques, and beyond the binary di division between all diplomacy, meaning bilateral, secret, or at least, uh, uh, let's say, uh, discreet, um, and resident, in any case, and the new diplomacy, multilateral, public, itinerant, there is uh, not yet, uh, uh, there is a, a, a huge change, but not a change that will solve yet the various uh, difficulties that a diplomat must surpass in, uh, in the contemporary world. 
in a postmodern and more global world. In fact, diplomacy has to consider a more global um, conception and to include, include new resources. My question is, is if the university cannot be one of those resources, if we cannot use universities for more than the diplomats are already um, uh, used to uh, use. We, you have here a small um, systematization of the matter. With blue, uh, I've marked the um, traditional roles of the university in connection with the diplomatic action. The universities educate. They give the uh, uh, initial background, the initial uh, formation for a future diplomat. It will not be enough, as a career diplomat might say you. Uh, he will need uh, years of training and experience to become uh, uh, fully prepared uh, for his task. Anyway, the university on the other side is a place where we study culture and cultures. So we study culture as a system, uh, and we study the variety of cultures. In this way, we are building abilities for intercultural communication that is essential for, uh, uh, for any diplomatic uh, task. Uh, university started in the last uh, uh, two decades to become more and more involved in what we call diplomatic training, something that usually uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs um, it uh, uh, will develop uh, um, with its own forces, uh, now starting to become more and more um, uh, involved uh, with the university programs. On the other side, the university it is also um, a target for a diplomat. If we are going to develop uh, cultural programs or um, to contact uh, a variety of um, um, uh, people, um, a more open uh, um, uh, public in a society, we, well, a, 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 a diplomat will willingly approach a university. You have there people who are young, who are, who are perceptives, people who are also well prepared in uh, intercultural communication, like professors, and you may organize very nice uh, events with a uh, lot of success. So, um, a university may be a host for diplomatic actions in cultural diplomacy, in public diplomacy, and even in what we call track to diplomacy, which is the citizen diplomacy. I mean, diplomacy that doesn't theoretically and officially involve uh, governmental action. With yellow, you have what I believe uh, might uh, be and it will uh, and will soon become more um, more and more the role of the university in um, the diplomatic field. So the university may become a more involved actor in track to diplomacy. I mean, a more involved actor in citizens' diplomacy. Last year, more than 300,000 students from all Europe traveled from a country to another in the Erasmus program. There are people who are taking their ideas, their um, way of life, their way of thinking in other countries. They are seeing the things that they are expecting to see and a lot of things that they didn't thought that are, uh, are going to be uh, found there. Uh, so the university as a place where people from an inter uh, will create a more and more international environment. The university, it's if you mean, if you mean, if you, if you uh, 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 allow me to say so, um, somehow predestined to be uh, a place for um, citizen diplomacy, for track to. Diplomatic actions on the other side might be developed by the universities as institution from, for their, their own purposes. The universities are now in a more competitive environment. The internationalization has become something that it is a criteria 
for university ranking, university ranking will be more and more a mean for the university to develop their financial means. So the university will start to think more, the university leader will start to think more and more like a corporate leader, for example. And cooperative diplomacy is already, in theory and in practice, a reality. So maybe we'll see, and, and uh, uh, there are all the signs for that, universities starting to create their own, um, so to speak, diplomatic uh, persons. People who are able to negotiate an agreement. People who are capable to create um, uh, uh, a double diploma program. People who are going to find solution in a certain uh, legal, uh, juridical uh, frame to um, uh, import solutions and to innovate solution in order to develop an international um, uh, dimension of the university. Of course, cultural diplomacy comes in mind immediately when we are thinking uh, on a role uh, for the university in uh, the diplomatic action. It will not, not be so difficult to delegate some cultural activity, some uh, diplomatic activities in the cultural field for the universities in certain conditions and provide that certain um, uh, rules are uh, uh, respected. But in fact, cultural diplomacy, it is not just the that just a cultural uh, exchange. Cultural diplomacy, in its traditional uh, meaning, means a government working with other government uh, or other governmental institutions from, from a foreign country in order to develop cultural uh, exchanges. A university is not a governmental actor. It will never be, hopefully. <laughs> so, it is not, uh, it will never be able to uh, uh, substitute the governmental uh, approach. In that case, of course, uh, to speak about traditional cultural diplomacy and a role for the university might be a bit uh, uh, difficult. On the other hand, I also want to um, um, add a nuance in our conversation. Of course, we put a lot of trust in cultural diplomacy. This is why we have, we also, um, I'm also uh, um, uh, bring that uh, um, uh, issue on the table. Is the university a valid, uh, a legitimate actor in the field of cultural diplomacy? But cultural diplomacy in itself is not something that all the um, uh, foreign uh, ministries appreciate. Uh, as a powerful tool in changing uh, the, uh, uh, the world or in changing the uh, certain country's uh, um, uh, position in the world. As you may see here, we have two, um, first of all, a sign, which is not good, is the fact that if you are going to look for a bibliography on cultural diplomacy, you'll find the scars. I mean, very, very few scholars approach the subject. What is cultural diplomacy? What it does? Is it useful? Um, you are not going to find, for example, studies that will evaluate the real um, effects in practical terms of the cultural diplomacy in changing uh, a state uh, uh, position in the world. Everybody agrees that that cultural uh, diplomacy or public diplomacy do have an important role to play, but very few are capable to explain that role in more uh, uh, pragmatic terms. You have here two uh, quotes from uh, uh, two studies um, who actually um, suggest that cultural diplomacy, it isn't very well appreciated in some of the most important um, uh, foreign services in the world. 
That is a pity because cultural diplomacy, just like public diplomacy, it is a powerful tool to change opinions and to mold opinions. And the power over opinion, as you can see, that was uh, told us by uh, uh, Carr, um, one of the classics of the diplomatic studies, is no less essential for political purposes than military and economic power, and has always been closely associated with them. As Eastern Europeans, we know very well that uh, uh, cultural exchanges, that agreements on the cultural, uh, in the cultural field came sometimes easier and much easier than agreements on the military field on, or agreements on political uh, issues or economic issues. So they, are, they, they might be uh, a soft power, but as the water is soft and powerful at the same time, the cultural diplomacy, the cultural action may be also um, uh, perfectly capable to create uh, a bridge and to change an opinion. It is important to change opinions because the, the cultural identities are stereotypical. I hope uh, I didn't choose the worst of the examples. But here is how a very well-known artist, who is in fact a Bulgarian, uh, represented Europe in the eyes uh, of a Latin America. So uh, you notice uh, for the polar for Poland, it's, um, I should say, quite well, El Papa Chulo, it doesn't sound uh, too bad. Uh, for Romanians, Hermanitos, well, I'm not offended, and uh, in fact, yes, we do speak a Latin language. I'm not sure about Hungarians, probably depends on how you feel about Attila. Um, but uh, uh, for the other uh, Eastern uh, uh, European countries, of course, things uh, start to be a bit uh, more uh, complicated. Uh, yes, we do think in stereotypes. It helps to organize things. Uh, but uh, stereotypes are also um, uh, extremely uh, difficult to change. And uh, we need very often to change stereotypes in order to make ourselves uh, accept it and to make our goals um, uh, uh, realized. Public diplomacy, cultural diplomacy, it is propaganda maybe. And that is the opinion of someone that we know and also someone who knows international relations and Europe um, in his whole. Richard Holbrook. So in 2001, his opinion was that public diplomacy, which now largely includes cultural diplomacy in many of the foreign uh, uh, affairs uh, services, it's in fact psychological welfare, if you really want to be blunt, propaganda. Or Joseph Nye told us that we should create soft power and not propaganda. Propaganda is perceived as something devious, something uh, untrustful, so uh, something to be avoided. This is why we try to um, uh, change uh, uh, that uh, attitude. And the culture is a word that comes more and more in the language of the international players. Here we have someone, a quote from someone, who is not to, dis to be described as uh, the person involved on cultural uh, domain, the General David Petraeus. He knows something about intercultural communication. So he told us this, culture is the decisive terrain. And we must study that terrain in the same way that we have always studied the geographical terrain. So if a military tells us that culture should be approached like um, a strategy, like a military strategy, maybe we should do so. It, is, it doesn't sound very soft, of course, but in diplomacy, 
we not we don't look for softness necessarily. We use softness as a tool in order to obtain a practical uh, result. Are we capable in the universities to participate in such actions? Here I uh, propose you to uh, uh, take a look at the Sanders five-stage model for track two process. Track two, it's equal um, citizen diplomacy. Track one, you know what it is. It was a diplomat does in his official uh, function day after day. Track two, it's something that creates communication between people in order to promote um, national uh, objectives, but be among pe uh, between people who are not in official positions. For example, be among, uh, between uh, students coming in, the, in a foreign university, uh, between professors coming to a conference and talking about their uh, respective uh, cultures, uh, they are uh, changing ideas and this way uh, uh, exp make, ev may, making everybody understand that uh, a Lithuanian and a Romanian and a Poland, uh, Polish and a, a British and a French, when they speak my philosophy, are perfectly capable to understand the same thing. Um, if I'm looking at the first four elements on that uh, five stage model, I might say that everybody may agree a university is perfectly qualified in the first, the first four, um, for the first uh, four steps. We do decide to engage anyway we are forced to do it as long as our uh, phones will soon depend on it. Uh, we do uh, map the relationship, uh, we are perfectly capable to, to do uh, the mapping of the relationship together. We are used to debate, we are used to work together. The probing, probing the dynamics of the relations, uh, relationship also uh, uh, is something that we are doing uh, uh, class by class, seminary by seminary, and to experience a relationship by singing together, also it is not something strange to a uh, university um, as a um, as a structure of uh, education and research. But acting together, when a university will be capable to do the, the fifth step on that five-stage model, then a university as an institution will be capable to undertake diplomatic action as such. Because what differentiates in diplomacy in foreign uh, uh, affairs, um, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs from any other uh, uh, official institution, governmental or non-governmental, is that, that they are capable, Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, members are capable of acting together. So I believe that we are going to, um, uh, to, to uh, uh, slide from the yellow to the blue on that uh, uh, on that uh, um, uh, uh, design only when all the five steps recommended for uh, the track two will be in their places. And I believe university, with the increasing internationalization of their campuses, are on the verge to do that step. Thank you.